guitar so what I was trying to say is the actual stock pickup that came with it was better than the one that I put in it and the one that I put in it costs a lot of money it doesn't have you know when I usually hit E and it growls it ain't there I don't like it the play it plays nice you got to get used to it because it's like playing a friggin samurai sword it's just woo, woo, woo. jeez. But uh, yeah, this thing has been sitting in its white case for uh, a year. I don't know, but it's cool. It has this. I like that. It's so he can, you know, you know, and then the pack. And most uh, guitarists, when they get a chance to design their own and they get their signature, they always do something like this to you know so it'll stay in so it's not like here so it, or here it's smart randy did it up here on the top wing was cool Jeez. just that alone made the freaking thing cool so i'm unplugged i'm done uh <laughs> sorry uh i'll tell you a story i'll tell you a story because i was thinking about this last night I actually was thinking, uh, I had a band, I was putting together Stiletto, actually, and it was me, my friend Tony, the bass player, Daz Bash, he went on and went to be uh, in a, 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 a pair of dice, gay name, man, gay isn't funny, ah, <laughs> but uh, it is, <laughs> stupid name, but Daz, unbelievable drummer, like, even if he did partake in something, you could count on that guy to be like a friggin' bam, 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 bam. Like at the when we did a showcase at the country club for Arista Records, and they walked out on the third song, said this is the worst piece of shit band they had ever seen in their life. Go on YouTube; it's on there. Part of it, the country club stiletto. Look up Stiletto 86 Country Club. Whoa. It's hard. One, I told the sound guy to F off. And so he went beep. So I had to crank my amp, but it wasn't, you know, so was the other idiot. And he had his amp was coming through the PA. So you couldn't hear me at all. So it sounded horrible because the other guy, the other guitar player, Kip, sucked. Now here's the thing. When me, okay, so yeah, that's what happened. It was me, Tony, this singer named Darren. I never got his last name, so we started calling him Darren Darren, like Duran Duran. But he looked, like, perfect. He had the white hair, perfectly quaffed. It, he, he looked great. And they were all, you know, small compared to me. But who cares? I was like 6'4 six, six, and 140-something pounds. So it didn't matter. And uh, we didn't take Kip. It was me, I think, Daz, Darren, and Tony. Yes, it was. We went to the country club because Tony knew Tracy Guns. And Tracy was still in Guns N' Roses. So we went to go see them. And there was a lot of industry people there. And this was 1990... No, 1986. Beginning of 86 or 85. 86. Beginning of 86. So that's when, you know... I didn't realize how fast that happened, but... So there it was, and I don't... I'm pretty sure Tracy was in the band, because I know Tony knew him, so he'd always get you know put on the list 
and even in LA Guns. So we went there several times, and that's when I got in a fight. Well, not a fight, but I sucker punched Axel for being a jerk at the Troubadour. I told you guys that story, right? Right. He thought I was picking up on his girlfriend. I went to the bar. His girlfriend followed me. She slid me her number. I got it, put it in my pocket. And then Axel comes up. You know, he's like five foot two. He's like, hey, man, you, you, you. And I'm like, dude, I'm not picking up on your girlfriend. I just came here to get a drink. She, I don't know, she came up with after me. I don't know, dude. I don't know her. I'm not trying to pick her up. He's like, dude, you better not, man. You're not effing my bitch, man. I'm like, you know what? Wham! And he just went down. Boop. And I said, bartender, because he's a really cool chick that worked there, usually during the weeknights. And this is L.A. Guns playing. They already had a record out, and they're playing, like, Tuesday night, Troubadour. And there was hardly anybody there. It was, like, 50 people. And uh, so she said, okay, get out so you don't get in trouble. And I told the doorman, Mike. Everybody got to remember Mike at the Troubadour. He was the door guy, big, tall, black dude, very cool, very nice. But if you messed around, you were getting thrown out onto your head. So I told him, dude, I had to, I had to sucker punch his guys behind the bars. Like, ah, don't, you know, don't worry about it. Because we were buds. Because I had played in a band a couple. Well, here's a story, and we'll end on this. It's not a, it's not a very good, it's not. Mm. So, okay, so I hit Axel. So what I was saying is, the first, let's go back to the country club. So me, Tony, Darren, Darren, and Daz were at the country club to see Guns N' Roses and walk out on them because they were horrible. A lot of people were. I mean, most of the people just turned around and walked out. And this is the country club. I can't remember who else was playing. But the guys, somebody, I can't remember what record company or what label they were from, but they're like, you guys in a band? And we're like, yeah. What's the name? I said, Stiletto. I said, hey, that's a good name. Like one guy's like, you guys could get signed on your looks alone. I'm like, fuck yeah, of course we're good. 1986. And we're like, hell yeah, man. So Tony's like, come on, let's celebrate. So we went into the bathroom, came back, and that was that. We talked, 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 talked. They gave us cards. We gave them cards. Apparently they came and saw us once in Stiletto. But unfortunately, Daz had a roommate the roommate was a horrifyingly bad guitar player apparently he's a little better now but he was a, came he had to come with the deal so if daz came into the band so did kip and it just ruined the band so we played a bunch of gigs from like june till the end of summer like october september october then i broke the band up and then started trick-or-treat so what was the story that okay so that was that so the Troubadour. So this, so Mike, the, the door guy, cool guy. So I'm playing in this other band, and Trey is singing. And he's still in high school, so he's squeaking. And he's got, you know, tight little pink spandex. And, you know, he just, he wasn't getting it. Eventually he got it, but at that time he wasn't getting it. So he's squeaking away there on stage, and I'm playing, and I'm like, yeah, i got to do something heavy, so... I was also trying to think of gimmicks, you know? A friend of mine was living in my garage. A lot of people lived in that garage. Mandy did, Chris Holmes, uh, and my friend Bill. And we were friends from high school, but he was like a, well, uh, what do you call it, a liar. A perpetual, not perpetual, uh, but the other thing, liar. He lied all the time about everything. And it got him in trouble. So he's living in my garage. I had to kick him out with his wife which was very r ridiculous. I said, dude, if you're going to live here, I want, a, I want a refrigerator full of beer, you know, Miller, and wine coolers, California coolers. I love those things, orange. So he'd go down and he'd write bad checks and he'd have that thing stocked. And I'd just go out, you know, wake up around 2, go outside, blah, 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 blah and lay in the backyard. So that was good, but I had to kick him out. So I kicked him out. And he left all his stuff there, all his belongings. So after like three months of calling him, he's not calling me back. So I started going through the stuff. And I found pictures 
of his ex-wife because his wife divorced him. And she was a little chunky. She was a lot chunky. And <laughs> so apparently, because we had, you know, I had a drum set in there and we would kind of jam. We'd tell them, you got to get out because we're going to jam a little bit. So there's a drum set and a, my Marshall and a bass amp. So <laughs> apparently, I don't know why, but he had her put the drumsticks in an area that they shouldn't go but they were there and he took pictures lots of them like 20 or 30 of them and we were like oh geez it's like a it's like a car wreck you can't look away but you keep looking because it doesn't look right it's like a hippopotamus swallowing twigs i don't know what the hell very bad i know this is a bad one but hey you're getting the story because i'm remembering it so we found these pictures. I'm like, dude. <laughs> I said, Trey, you know, we're going to get the usual crowd. Let's get them going. Throw these pictures out. Say, hey, look, at I got some, we got pictures for you guys at band, of the band. And just throw them. And he did. Middle of the set. He's like, all right. <laughs> Woo. And the pictures went. And they went all over the place. And everybody's like picking them up and like, Wow! And Mike, the door guy, got one of the best or worst of them. And he's like, what the ha? You know, he loved it. So he had it, you know, pinned up in his little cubbyhole area where he'd check tickets and, you know, stamp your hand and all that stuff. That picture was there till the day he quit. And he's like, you guys are crazy. How did you get? And I'm like, you don't want to know. Just... There's the picture. There you go. That's all you need to know. Anyway, so that, my friend, that guy that was living in my garage, he ended up, you know, dying. Which is sad. You know, we went to school together. We were friends. I, I don't know what happened. He just one day got a phone call. He was dead. Funeral. So we go, funeral, forest lawn. And he's buried there. This is like 1980. 1989, 1990, and uh, that was like one of my first friends that died, and I'm like, whoa, this is it's heavy, but I didn't know how to react to it, so I drank, <laughs> as usual, and uh, I think it was 1990, so I would always go visit him at Forest Lawn, Hollywood Hills Forest Lawn, because I got my grandma and my grandpa there, so I, you'd go there a lot and you know clean up stuff. And my first wife's grandfather's there. So, anyways, he was there. So I always go by and say, hey, Bill, you shouldn't have done that. You could have been here now. But anyways, I go and I'm looking everywhere. I can't find him. So I go to the office. I'm like, hey, where is he? Like, oh, well, he was disinterred and they cremated him and sold the pot. I'm like, who? I'm like, oh, it was apparently his, and it was his brother. I'm like, oh my gosh, that is the lowest you could ever go. How rock and roll is that? Nothing at all. But the story led to that because of the pictures and all that stuff and decking and all that crap. So eventually we got to a very bad ending. So let's go on a happy ending. Subscribe and comment and tell me to never say stuff like that again or whatever, all right? Later.